Metro Count, the Traffic Data Specialists. Looking into uh, road hazard, we want to analyse speed. We want to understand the nature of driver behaviour with respect to speed. One of the statistics that's widely used throughout the industry, almost universally used, is a statistic called the 85th percentile. When we're using the 85th percentile, we really should understand what it is we're talking about. 85th percentile is the speed at or below which 85% of all vehicles are observed to travel under free flowing conditions past a nominated point. When we choose our traffic survey location, we are nominating the point and we're gathering the statistics at that point on the road. The 85th percentile represents the operating speed of that road. So we really need to understand why we use the 85th percentile and understand some of its limitations and how we need to examine the underlying traffic data before just simply quoting the 85th percentile as is. Okay, so when we're measuring any statistical event, we can plot the frequency on a graph from minus infinity to positive infinity. So the sum variable could be anything like children's head sizes or heights of teenagers or something like that. Uh, and what we'll find if we record enough samples is that the statistics may fall onto a bell curve. If the mean is in the middle, this will often be considered to be a statistically normal distribution. With a normal distribution, 50% of the observations will be less than the mean, and 34.1% of the observations will be one standard deviation above the mean. If we apply the same theory of a normal distribution to speed, in other words, we consider that driver behaviour conforms with the normal distribution, well, instead of just some random variable, we're measuring speed, and it just so happens if we add 34.1 to 50, we're getting 84.1, which is approximately 85% of the traffic, which leads us to our 85th percentile. So what the 85th percentile is essentially trying to measure is the mean plus one standard deviation, assuming that the speed distribution is statistically normal. The primary reason that the 85th percentile was chosen to represent speed instead of the mean plus one standard deviation simply comes down to the way that traffic data was collected years ago before the convenience of a modern computer. So simply recording a few vehicles and sorting them from lowest to highest and picking the 85th percent vehicle, calling that the 85th percentile and representative of the mean plus one standard deviation was much simpler. With the advent of modern computers though, we can look at the mean plus one standard deviation. That, that could become a new industry norm, but it's not yet. So we should be aware of what it is we're trying to do before we just simply quote 85th percentile statistics as is. Okay, so let's look at some examples. I'm now running uh, the Metro Count Traffic Executive software and the report that I'll be producing is the speed histogram. Let's firstly do that for a typical semi-rural location where the traffic is reasonably free flowing, a mix of light and commercial traffic. This particular location had a 90 kilometer per hour speed zone. So here we are, let's produce the speed histogram. Let's just double check that the speed is set to 90. Just change that speed limit there to 90. So here we have the speed histogram. And you can see that this particular location does resemble a bell curve. So therefore we would be reasonably comfortable quoting the, the 85th percentile as the operating speed of this road. And it's only marginally above the speed limit. Okay, so let's look at another location. We'll just step this up a bit. What we're now going to look at is six lanes of a reasonably high speed metropolitan distributor road. And we'll produce the same report, the speed histogram. So at this location, where the previous one we had 23,000 or so vehicles across the week, 
This one we have 1.8 million vehicles across the course of a week. Six lane, very busy motorway. And what do we see? The 85th percentile is 79.9 kilometres per hour. So slightly less than the posted speed limit. But notice the shape of the graph. If we look at the graph, it's significantly different to the free flowing rural environment. This is a metropolitan location close to the CBD. And you can imagine that during the morning and afternoon period, it will suffer periods of flow collapse, congestion. And you see those, see those artifacts reflected in the shape of the graph in that it's not symmetrical. Its left hand shoulder has a lower gradient and it has a more distinct shoulder at the low speed side of the graph. Now, one of the definitions of 85th percentile is that it includes free flowing conditions. What we're looking at here is every vehicle, 85th percentile, 79.9 kilometers per hour. We want to look at the free flowing vehicles. The, the vehicles couldn't speed even if the driver wanted to because they're trapped, they're, they're stuck in congestion. So a quick way of dealing with this is via the local profile, right click, local profile, and we add a separation or headway filter of more than four seconds. So that what that means is that we're only analyzing vehicles that had a four second gap in front of them. So essentially the driver of this vehicle can travel at the speed he or she wishes to travel, not being impeded by the vehicle in front. And let's see what difference that makes to the analysis here. Currently we're looking at 1.8 million vehicles, applying a headway filter of more than four seconds. You can see straight away that the shape of the graph has changed significantly. Instead of 1.8 million vehicles, we're now analysing 371,000. So a much lower proportion of the vehicles in this location were truly free flowing. And see the cha change of the shape of the graph. It's gone from having a distinct left shoulder and a lower gradient on the left hand side. Now it's almost perfectly symmetrical and you would certainly be comfortable quoting the 85th percentile. And instead of being just slightly below the speed limit, it's now above the speed limit at 83.5. Okay, so if we look at this location, it's a single lane approaching a central business district across a bridge and for, for the week, we've measured 170,000 vehicles in that single lane. The speed limit was 60 kilometers per hour and the 85th percentile is 67.3. So 7.3 kilometers per hour above the speed limit. So we might immediately notice that we've got a bit of a problem. Reasonable people are choosing to travel up to seven kilometers per hour over the speed limit. But look at the shape of the graph. It's anything but symmetrical. It has a distinct low speed peak. The top of the main peak is clustered around the speed limit at 60 kilometers per hour. But this low speed peak is clustered around 25, 26 kilometers per hour. So all these vehicles that are doing these speeds are influencing the 85th percentile, effectively pulling it down. These vehicles are in fact stuck in the morning congestion so this 85th percentile of 67.3 is not truly indicative of the operating speed of that road. When the road free flows, we'll get a completely different picture. Let's look at that now. We'll right click, local profile, and apply that headway filter of more than four seconds. And so this graph changes from 170,000 vehicles to 29,000. But notice the change of the shape of the graph. It now resembles the shape of the rural highway, the other freeway, and this location in, in that they share the same properties of being approximately symmetrical. What we're now seeing though is that the vehicles are choosing to travel up to 73.1 kilometers per hour. So reasonable drivers are 13 kilometers per hour per hour over the speed limit. Now that's a cause of serious concern. It means that the road design is encouraging vehicles to exceed the speed limit quite significantly. If there was an observed accident trend at this location, it could well be explained by the speed. 
So it's important for us to be mindful of where the 85th percentile comes from, why we use it, and how we need to be careful when we're using it to build a truer picture of driver behaviour and just not quote the statistic as is right out of the box. We need to interact with the software on a per data set basis and provide a more thorough picture to the police, to engineers, to monitor the road more effectively, uh, to build and design a lower speed if that's what we need.